There's not a lot of video of Nigel Wright in his PMO chief of staff days, but what there is is telling, like this stuff. Look carefully at the faces of those that want to shake his hand, want to exchange smiles. It's a look of deference. This is a man with power, lots of it. In fact, at that moment, he was quite possibly the most powerful unelected person in the country. I come here very eager to get going, extremely committed um, to making this work and getting it right. This is the first picture we could find in our archives of a young Nigel Wright, a face in the crowd at a Tory rally in 1981. But look who else was there, right across the aisle. A parliamentary reporter by the name of Mike Duffy. Crosby's endorsement tonight was an important boost for the Clark forces. It would still be a few years before the two men would actually meet. Later, Wright went on to work for his first majority government prime minister, Brian Mulroney. Then in the early 90s, he was there for Kim Campbell too. But I didn't feel I was coming through the lands. It was in those years he would occasionally bump into Mike Duffy in the halls of parliament. It would be a relationship that would come back to haunt both men. The people of Canada have spoken. When the Liberals regained power, the private sector called, and Wright left Ottawa, quickly rising through the ranks at Onyx Corporation, the Canadian-based, highly successful international private equity firm. There he was, the right-hand man to Onyx founder, Jerry Schwartz. Wright was the classic man behind the man, exactly the kind of person Stephen Harper would need not long after he became prime minister. And that was Wright's ticket back into frontline politics in 2010. Harper's office had been careening from one political misstep to another. The near disaster of the 2008 budget, which claimed all was good even as the economy teetered on recession. If we were going to have some kind of big crash or recession, we probably would have had it by now. The near loss of power over the coalition crisis and the constant pressure and problems of successive minority governments. Nobody wants uh, crises, nobody wants uh, yet another election. We have uh, received the support of certain... Canadians. Wright's work in the private sector had made him very rich. He was smart, calm and confident. The hope was he'd bring the same finesse to the Prime Minister's office. Though Onyx seemed to consider his departure temporary right from the start, letting it be known his office would remain untouched, awaiting his return. That raised questions about the ethics of such a powerful business player joining the PMO, which is what this committee hearing was all about. I've invested uh, at least 20 years in business in my own reputation. I'm excited to come into public service because I think I have something to offer and to contribute. In no way will I put myself in a position of undoing what's taken uh, 20 years to build. In the end, Wright wowed the room, and his appointment was never in any serious doubt. Something his friends on Bay Street, and they're from all corners of the business and political world, applauded. They joined the queue of those who say he's brilliant, completely trustworthy, and utterly truthful. And so, on deck of the PMO, it all seemed to work. Things settled down, order was restored. And by 2011, the right-led staff was piloting a majority conservative government. Harper's first in four attempts. A strong, stable, national, majority conservative government. But then this. Scandal in the Senate. A senator comes under increasing fire. Another senator, Mike Duffy, is under scrutiny tonight. The office he'd worked so hard to keep scandal free was suddenly awash in crisis. With right in the thick of it. And Senator Mike Duffy. The cause of Nigel Wright's worst career moment and Stephen Harper's worst scandal. Even tonight, more than two years later, all three men have yet to put the whiff of wrongdoing behind them. 
The mess was all about expenses, from whether Duffy even qualified to be a senator from PEI, to who paid for his travel there, to who paid for the senator's partisan speech trips, even questions about cabs and meals. There were tens of thousands of dollars at stake, all paid from the public purse. Senator Duffy, could you just stop and ask a question? You should be doing adult work. Wright was quarterbacking the handling of the controversy and the payback of Duffy's questionable expenses. First, trying to push them through the Conservative Party, and when the party balked, he paid for them himself. $90,000 of his own money. Mr. Duffy, when did you get promised in exchange for nine thousand dollars? What could we? Did you promise anything in exchange for that ninety thousand dollars? It was the biggest news story to hit Ottawa in years. Did you do anything wrong? It smelled bad, and before you knew it, the Mounties were crawling all over it, digging through lots of emails. What they found included this exchange between Wright and a guy named Benjamin Perrin a special advisor and legal counsel to the Prime Minister, copied to other staffers in the PMO. It suggested that the circle of early knowledge on all this went straight to the top. On February 22nd, 2013, right. I do want to speak to the PM before everything is considered final. Then, less than an hour later, this. We are good to go from the PM. Good to go? Wright has never publicly explained that choice of words. What did the Prime Minister approve during that hour? Harper says he never knew anything about any of this. It was obviously not correct for that decision to be made and executed um, <clears throat> without my knowledge or without public transparency. The Prime Minister is taking responsibility, fulfilling his mandate to Canadians to protect the public purse. The Prime Minister did not How know. How do you know? His his personal ethics are beyond reproach. What is clear is that Harper, when the story first went public, praised Wright and said through then spokesman Andrew McDougall, Mr. Wright will not be resigning. Mr. Wright has the full support of the Prime Minister. But then, days later, with the heat rising. Has the Prime Minister grown so out of touch that he actually expects Canadians to believe this story? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Wright uh, accepted full responsibility for his error in this matter. Uh, he offered his resignation and I accepted that resignation. And then months later, in a Halifax radio interview, Harper did the full flip-flop, claiming he'd fired Wright. Well, I had a chief of staff who uh, made an inappropriate payment to Mr. Duffy. He was dismissed. That was too much for some of Harper's own ministers. They balked at the boss and rushed to Wright's defense. I've known Nigel a long time. He's a, he's a very principled individual. He's somebody who um, is honest. As for Onyx, the company that had made Wright a multi-millionaire, it kept its promise. His old office was indeed waiting for him, this time in England, where he now helps run the company's overseas operations from this building in London. So what really happened in those frantic 2013 days that have now led to a courtroom drama and a full-on Senate scandal filled with shady stories of fiddled expense claims? This monstrous fraud was the PMO's creation from start to finish. And a government and a PMO at times seeming to have lost its way. Anyone who wants to use public office for their own benefit should make other plans or better yet, leave this room. What about Nigel Wright? Why not take a couple of questions? Will we have a better idea after Nigel Wright steps into the witness box tomorrow? Clearly, the most important person to take the stand since this long drawn out saga began. Will he, as the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, explain why he was so worried about Duffy's expenses anyway? Will Wright be convincing in explaining why, when the crunch came, he went into his own pocket for $90,000 to pay off what Mike Duffy wouldn't? I mean, really, why didn't the PMO just let Duffy twist in the wind alone instead of drawing everyone into the mess? And finally, will Wright make it clear exactly what Stephen Harper knew and when he knew it? 
we may be only hours away from finally finding out.